Hello everyone and welcome back to the GB4 Offline Championship. We are here now for the 2010 season. I am your commentator, George Roke, and I'll be taking you through most of the races this season as after probably after the next six races, I will be going away on holiday, so I will not be commentating for a few races, but for the time being still, I will be your commentator for this series and I hope you will enjoy the races as much as I have, certainly like last season. And we are here for the Bahrain Grand Prix, which we are starting out this week, not the not the Australian Grand Prix at Melbourne, where we had, obviously, Alex Southgate tipping over Joseph Willows, an infamous moment from the season, which we won't ever really forget, as we'll be racing also on the Endurance layout, which is not exactly very popular, I'd say, amongst the drivers, but anyway, we'll be racing on the Endurance layout. But here is the grid for the first ever race of the 2010 season. Joseph Willis is first, Florian Volker is in second, Alex Southgate is in third, w Michael Oskar is in fourth, Will Miller is in fifth, nearly made a mistake there, Felix Sontag is in sixth. And uh, then in 7th place is Waze Kuba for Ferrari, with James Willows in 8th. So no changes for Ferrari, no changes for Red Bull at the top. Jay McKenzie moved to Renault, he's in 9th. Rolla Moitian, who moved to 10th, who, um, who qualified in 10th and moved to Force India, having left Toro Rosso to replace the to replace Azul Zafri, who retired from the series. Viggo Holst, who moved to Sauber who in 11th place, who was at Renault. 12th place was Adam Wolfe for Williams, and Sam Thompson, who moved from Force India in 13th. Robert Ionescu, who came up from the GP2 series, he qualified in 14th place. In 15th place, is Evan Byrne, followed by Armar Carr in 16th. In 17th place is the Salva of Finley Strachan, who moved from Renault, having had a pretty nightmare season, you could say. George Roke, who moved from uh, BMW Salva after having a pretty hor hor horrible season, probably the worst luck out of everybody there. Not a good qualifying, though. Ro Roman Quag, who came up for the GP2 series, having finished third in the championship and got the most pole positions. Jordan Maturin, who moved to Virgin from Lotus. And Michael Motro, who stayed at Lotus, who stayed at Lotus. And Kelly Bryce, who has returned to the series after a two-year absence, qualifies in last place. As we will now head to see the weather, and as you can see there, bright blue sunshine, not a cloud in sight, not a speck of rain in sight, as it's never rained for any bar in Grand Prix, and I imagine it still won't ever rain for the Grand Prix in the future. And now, in a, in a few seconds, we will head to the grid for the first race of the 2010 season. I hope you're looking forward to it as much as I am. And here we are, so 49 laps. The, the lap around this track, around the endurance layout, is two minutes, so it's going to be quite a long race. 49 laps it is. So Joseph Willow's on pole with Volker in second, and here as the lights are coming on, we have four lights, and now five lights... And the lights are out for the first ever race of the 2010 season, and Volker's got a great start. And so is the Ferrari of Will Neller, I think, who's coming through, swiving, uh, swerving his way through the pack as they're coming into turn one. Volker is going to take the lead, is he? Joseph Willows is down the inside, but Neller's going to make a move into second, and Neller's taken second. What an unbelievable start from Will Neller, but Joseph Willows leads. Volker's in third, and is he being overtaken, actually? But no, Volker's got a second place back. Volker has got second place from Neller, and Volker's now attacking Joseph Willows for the lead as they're coming down into the right-hander. Before they go into the endurance layer, there's contact behind between Gal and Nella. And Nella's going to wave with it. He's still staying third, but Volker and Willows are side by side. And Willows is going to lose the lead, looks like, to Volker. And yes, he is. As he has to back off as they come into the endurance layout. Southgate's in fourth. Nella's dropped all the way down to fifth, so his good start was all for nothing. So let's have a look. Let's go on board. So he started in fifth place. And so here we are. So they, here come the lights on. He started fifth, and he got a monumental start. Much better than anyone else there. So as you can see here... He got a fantastic start. He managed to get past uh, Southgate there, and then he managed to get on the inside and get past um, Mikolas Gal, and then he got on the inside and got tried to get past Joseph Willis as well. Well, actually, no, he got past Volker, and he almost took the lead from Willis, but he just didn't have enough straight-line speed to get through. And then he was hung out to dry there by Volker, who got back past, and then he lost some momentum coming through the corner, and that allowed Gal to get the slipstream and make a move coming into turn four. And he, as you can see, he makes a mistake, although there was a bit of contact there. So Gal made contact. He managed to control it, but Nella went wide, and Gal took advantage and took the place. So And Southgate also took advantage of that. So Nella, unfortunately, dropped down to the position that he started at. So how very unfortunate for Nella. He must have thought he was doing fantastic then, but unfortunately, just didn't quite go his way. So there's Holst up tonight. Wait, is that Thompson without a front wing? It is! So Thompson's lost his front wing, and he's gone into the back of his... I think that is Jay McKenzie, and he's just cannoned into the back of him. So a poor, poor start of the season for Thompson. After such an encouraging end of the season, winning the Belgian Grand Prix, he has just gone right into the back of uh, wait, is that of um, 
is that McKenzie or is that Evan Byrne? I'm not quite sure actually. Uh, but as you can see, Thompson's lost his front wing, and uh, who is it? So Robin Ineski just gone past. It was McKenzie actually, in fact. And oh, and there's and Burns lost his rear wing as well. So what's happened to Burn? So a nightmare start for both Renaults. He already lost his uh, wing at the start, and he got hit by the oh, he went into the winners. They got hit by the salber of I believe that is Vinley Strachan. So Vinley Strachan's bad luck continues. <laughs> So as you can see, they go, they're going very slow, it seemed to avoid contact, but then it just got all really stacked up, and Strachan just couldn't stop his car, goes into the back of Evan Burns, so his nightmare start the season, well, his nightmare, or his nightmare of, well, the GP4 Online Championship continues, I should say, so there's Qua going through, McKenzie getting passed by Bryce and Roke, I believe that is, as McKenzie's going very slowly, he's holding up a lot of the cars behind him, it's very difficult to overtake on this endurance layout, as... Thompson is being overtaken there. There's Mature and Roke's got passed, and now Quag's trying to get past McKenzie as he's holding him up here to come back onto the circuit. And Volker still leads with Willow, Willow's in second, but Gala's right behind him in third as they're coming onto the uh, onto the back straight or past the support pits, I should say. But Gala's right behind Willow's. Is he going to make a move coming at the end of the support straight? And is he going to make the move stick? He's right on the inside. Gala's going to make a move into the corner. Is he going to make the move stick? And Willow's backs out of the way, and he does complete complete it does he it's still just about side by side but gal has done it and gal moves up into second place willow's down into third and nella's moved up to fourth he's got past um southgate and so is cooper his teammate so it's been a frantic start to this first race of the season and willow's is now down to third but now cooper is trying is uh trying to hold off southgate as willow's is trying to get past southgate coming final turn and Willows is going to try to make no stick for sixth place. He breaks late. It's side by side. There's almost contact. And there is no contact. Sontag is now trying to get through as well. And Southgate has gone off. So Southgate's lost a number of positions. Sontag has taken advantage. But so has Viggo Holst as well. And I believe that. And Rolo Moichin as well. So that is very, very bad there for, for Southgate. It didn't quite work out as well as he'd hoped. As Southgate dropped all the way down to 10th. And it didn't exactly work out well for Sontag. And there was contact between Willows and Holst, I think that was. They've both gone off. And there's still contact there. And they're holding up the rest of the pack. Willows is holding up. That is, I think, Robert Ionescu. Southgate has dropped all the way down to 11th. This is quite a start we're having. As Ionescu is up to 9th. So he's made a great start up from 14th. Southgate's down to 11th. And now Carl's trying to make a move on Wolf. And there's Roke trying to make a move on uh, Maturin behind him. It's mad action right now. What a start we're having. As Strachan's in the pits, obviously changing his front wing. Side by side it was between... Between Maturin and Roke, but Maturin's kept the position. A lot of battling as they're going on to the endurance layout as Maturin's trying to get past Wolf into 13th place, and he's not going to quite make the move stick. This is a crazy start we're having right now. As there's Roke, there's Quark, there's the two Lotuses, Mocho and Quag, and there's Bryce right at the back as Thompson comes out, Strachan comes out, McKenzie comes out, Byrne comes out. <laughs> And Byrne has been held up, I think, because uh, he's had to wait for McKenzie to come in. So he's gonna, that's going to cost him a lot of time. I don't know, you know if we've relaxed. Obviously, the, uh, the, um, the, well, the lap around this track is quite long, but we will see. But Gal is in second, Nello's in third. And, oh, Nello's got past um, uh, Willows, I think he is. Yes, he has. So obviously, we've missed that. But you go down the order, how's that happened? But Volker has got himself a big lead now over Gal. He's got it to almost five seconds. So Volker is taking control of this race on lap two. We finally now... I believe calm down after that frantic start. Battles going on everywhere you could see. As Volker now comes down the back of the train. Oh, Evan Burns out the race. What's happened to Evan Burn? He's retired from the Grand Prix. And I think we've we've missed something. So wait, what's happened? So Gal uh Burn was in the pits. And so what's happened then? So Burn's coming into the pits. He was in last. And so he was behind McKenzie because McKenzie had already come into the pit. So what's happened? So he seemed to be okay. There were no problems there. And then he comes in and... Okay, so he seems to stop there. And then McKenzie goes... goes oh! Oh, he's been hit by Sam Thompson! Thompson has hit him coming out the pits! I, I, I've never seen anything like that before. What, what was that? So, so Thompson goes out and then he hits... Um, Burn and loses his rear wheel right where McKenzie's having his stop. I'm surprised he still managed to. <coughs> Sorry, I'm still get it going, but oh my goodness! So and then Burn, oh my, <laughs> it's absolutely crazy what's going on here. I don't understand what's happening. So McKenzie eventually manages to get himself going, and there's Burn in there without his uh, right uh, rear wheel. And <laughs> oh my goodness, see that this is this is some start of the season that we're having right here, like. Um, 
<laughs> I can see the crew comes out to him and they're like, uh, they they probably realise like, oh, I don't think we can repair his car, but <laughs> oh wow, so they 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 actually still change his tyres. They oh, so they do put the tyres on his car. So how come he retires from the race then? Like, I I don't quite know what's going on here. This is <laughs> this is this is something I've never seen before. So. And then he just doesn't go out, because I think probably the damage was too much. I think probably the damage was too terminal. And so he then retires, and there's the graphic showing that he retires from the race. So, I, 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 I don't know what to say. I, I, don't I can't believe what I'm seeing. Is now Cooper trying to make a move on Joseph Willis for fourth place, coming into the final corner. And is Cooper going to make the move stick? And yes, he does. As we finally, hopefully, the action has calmed down a bit. After those first two laps, probably some of the most unbelievable... Oh, hang on, no, Roland Moitian. Oh, his engine has blown, and he's got an engine problem. He's not gone into the pit, so it's clearly terminal. He's not going to be able to fix it. So Roland Moitian is going to have to retire from this race. So his bad luck just does not, does not, does not ever, ever, ever end. And Moitian is going to have to retire. Is he going to go off at turn one? Yes, he is. And that is a disastrous start for Roland Moitian, who looked to be doing really well. But unfortunately, he's going to have to retire from this race. And he pulls off at turn one, and I, I commentate his curse there. I thought all the action had been had calmed down, and nothing else was going to happen. But of course, I was very, very wrong. So Rolo Moichin retires from this race on lap three. He is the second retirement of the season after Evan Byrne, obviously after whatever the heck happened there. Uh, but um, Rolo Moichin has an engine failure, as you can see. He, come, he was coming down the back straight, it seems he was doing fine, and then obviously his engine blows just as he comes into the final corner. And yep, it's just before the final corner, his engine blows. And no surprise, probably due to the intense heat of the Bahrain circuit. <laughs> and he gets overtaken by Southgate, uh, uh, by Sontag, sorry, and by all the cars coming following him. So, uh, as I said, not a good start for Roland Moichin. He'll, he'll hope for better in the Australian Grand Prix. As you can see on board, he pulls off to the side of the circuit. And he, that is him out of the Grand Prix. What a shame. What a shame. But, uh, whew, whew, I can hopefully now relax. Those first two laps were absolutely mad. I tell you, I've never seen anything like it. It's even more, even more mad than uh, the... Oh, and there's George Roke going off. Oh, Roke's gone wide onto the, uh, onto the AstroTurf. And he's managed to avoid contact, fortunately, but... Wow, there's still a lot of a lot of action going on. So Roke just gets a bit out of shape, gets a bit of understeer, then oversteer, then just can't correct it in time. And he goes wide onto the quite hilly part of the track, and he loses a lot of position. He loses it to the two to the two Lotuses and the two Virgins, and Roke will want to get himself back past them as soon as possible. But not a good start to the season for George Roke either. And this is well, this is only lap three, and this is already essentially ten times better than the um, Blumen Australian Grand Prix, the Australian Grand Prix last year. But <laughs> Well, it will be interesting to see what else happens during this race. We've only been three laps and we've had almost everything happen that could possibly happen. As now Armar Car trying to make a move on Southgate. Is he all oh, very, very nearly contact? Coming into the final corner as they come onto the pit straight. Car right behind Southgate, who's had not a great start to this race. He'll want to recover as now Car is still right behind. As here is uh, Maturin trying to make a move on Roman Quag for 13th place is side by side between the version and between the Lotus who's going to win the version on the Lotus coming into turn one Maturin's going to be on the inside of Quag Quag locks up uh, quite a lot coming into turn one and he makes a mistake as Roke now makes a move on Michael Mocho for 16th place trying to recover after losing those positions after spinning off as there's a car from that Sam Thompson he spun round oh it's been a nightmare start to the race with Sam Thompson so he just he goes wide onto the curb Coming around, in, coming around onto the back straight, he just goes wide onto the curb, and he loses control. And I thought he, and he thought he kept it, but then he locked up again. He went wide onto the sandy part of the track, and he lost control, and he spins. So his nightmare start to the race continues. Now he's going to have a lot. He's going to have to gain a lot of time and places if he wants to get any points at all in this race. But they've probably gone out the window with that spin. As you can see, he just loses it. Looked like he controlled it after going originally wide, but then he loses it. You can see his car just at the top of the hill. As there goes McKenzie, and there goes uh, Finley Strachan past him. And Thompson is now down in last place in 20th position. So he will now rejoin, and will hope to hope at least gain a few places back before the end. But not a good start there. 
for Sam Thompson and not a good start of his season after what it was at Force India is now Adam Wolfe trying to defend from is this Kellen Bryce what a race he's having at the moment and uh, now as you know I don't believe it is it is Maturin so great race so far from Maturin he's going past Adam Wolfe in the Lotus and now Roman Quag is going to be right behind and overtaking the 13th place this is a great race we're having battles not even not just in the mid pack or up front they're happening at the back as well and is Quag going to try and make a move into turn one but uh, Wolfe is right behind Maturin and all this contact there is contact between the two, and Quag's going to take advantage of this, and he's going to take both into turn one. And Quag's up to 13th, the Turin's back down to 14th, Wolf into 13th, as now his teammate Kellen Bryce is right behind, and I imagine Rote will probably be right behind as well. But as you can see, Wolf, I think, tried to move. I don't think it was really ever on. I think he probably tried a bit too late, and he went to the back of him, and that, uh, and Quag said, Thank you very much, and just took the two places there. Wow. So, a great start here for Roman Quag. He's really showing what he. His talent in the GB2 series is now Rope is trying to get past Killian Bryce for 15th place. Is he going to make a move stick? Uh, the answer is no, he's not, is he? Or no, it's still side by side. Is Rope going to make a move? It's still side by side, but no, Bryce has got the position. He holds it, and he will keep 15th place at the moment. As now Michael Mocha is right behind. As now here we are on board, I believe, is this with Joseph Willows. And, it's, and oh, that's James Willows. And speaking of Willows, his brother, James, is... Out of this race, he suffered. It looks like an engine failure coming down the back straight, and he goes into the wall. And James Willis is out of this Grand Prix. A very disappointing start to the season for him after last season, which was which is pretty good by his standard. He won a couple of races. He won in China. He won in uh, he won in Japan, but it has not gone very well. And as you can see, it is a water leak, probably because there's not enough water from the car because of the uh, hot, raging sun draining all the water out of the car. So he had it. It looks like did he have it for a long time? So he coming down the support straights there was Armar Carr who got ahead of him in night who's ahead of him in night and uh, must have been around the next corner that he um suffered the problem as we go on board with him and we go around he seems to be okay for the moment just wait for it and there it is a water leak and you can see the problem it's terminal he couldn't quite get to the pits or that well he could have got to the pits to be fair I mean you can fix problems in this game but obviously Willows decided that his problem was not fixable I decided not to go into the pit, so there goes Southgate past him, and here comes the Packers now, as now there goes the engine, which is what signaled the end of his race. If it wasn't for that, he probably would have been able to make it to the pits, but with that, it was def it was terminal, it wasn't fixable, as there is, I believe, uh, maturing, getting past Adam Wolf in the background as well, and now Roach right behind Wolf, so we could have a battle going on, coming down the straight, as now Roach is going to get past Wolf side by side as they're trying to uh, overtake Willows and all oh, Wolf had to back off there to not go to avoid going into the back of Willows so Rope took the position and uh, Mocho nearly went into the back as well so wow this is uh, this has been some race so far quite incredible we've only been six laps and we've still got another uh, another I think I think 43 left to go I believe as now Vigor Holst is trying to make a move on Joseph Willows for 6th place. So Willows is really struggling right now. And Holst is going to try and make a move. He can't quite do it. He goes wild onto the curb actually in Holst. And he goes off the circuit. He loses a lot of time. But will he lose any places coming onto the front straight? And the answer is yes he does. He loses a place to, I believe that is Robert Ionescu. And it is Robert Ionescu. So Ionescu up to 7th on lap 7. A great start from the Romanian driver. And he is showing... Uh, his potential in this car, which is which is quite a dog last season, we can certainly say that. As now Ionescu is trying to defend from Holst, coming into the final corner, and oh, there was almost contact. They were essentially pushing each other through that corner there. And now Carl will hopefully try and see if he can take an advantage and take both if these if these two keep on battling. As that is Southgate, I believe, going wide into the final corner, and I think that is going to be um, uh, Roman Quag who's going to make a move on him. And he's, he's right behind him, I believe, into the background. As here's Ionescu, Holston, Carr right behind each other. And is uh, Quag going to make a move? We don't know. Is now Southgate dropped? He has dropped behind uh, Quag. And now Maturin is going to take a make a move into a, into a length place, coming into the final corner. And Maturin is going to make the move stick. So quite a race. Southgate is really, really struggling right now. I don't know what's going on with his car. I don't know if the team has set it up wrong or what. I have no idea what's going on. But Southgate is going to tr take, try and take advantage and take the place back. He'll easily breeze past Maturin side by side coming down the front straight and Southgate is going to take back a length place is he coming into the hairpin and the answer is yes he does he takes back 11th place and wow this has been some race so far and Maturin is probably going to try and make a move back as he has become into the hand, right hander before the endurance layout but it doesn't look like he will so Southgate will keep the position 
as there's Ro and Roke's now got past Maturin, so there we go, so that answers the question there. Roke has now got past Maturin after Southgate had got past him, so two places in a few corners lost there for Maturin. So now Roke is trying to overtake Southgate, so Southgate's be being overtaken by everybody in this race. So Southgate being overtaken by Roke now into the final corner, a very good place it seems for overtaking. And now Maturin is going to be right behind, so Maturin could try and make his way back past Southgate here. So Southgate is having an absolutely horrendous race, probably the worst race of his career so far, and we've only been 10 laps. As Maturin is side by side, is he going to be able to complete the move into turn one? The answer is, it looks like he will, breaking into first gear. And Bryce has, I mean, uh, Maturin, sorry, has completed the move as Southgate's had to back off, and Maturin is over to 12th, Southgate down into 13th. He would not have expected to be behind a Virgin this season, one of the new teams this year, or the new team this year, I should say, as old Maturin locks up there, but uh, he doesn't lose the place, as now here we're on board with Armar Carr, right behind Robert Ionescu, so Ionescu's been passed by Vigo Holst, and Carr has got the slipstream, he's going to have uh, the slipstream coming onto the straight, and he's going to overtake his teammate Ionescu into turn one, Let's have a look side by side between the two, and Carr is going to make the move stick, I believe. Yes, he does, and Carr is up into 8th place, and Carr, who obviously took over as well from, who took over from, I should say, Rela Moitin, as Rela Moitin went to Force India. He's yet to score a point in this series so far. His best finish was a ninth place, so he'll hope for more for this season. He'll hope for at least some points finishes this year. That's That will be his main aim. As here is the oh and there's uh, oh and there's contact oh and Bryce has made contact with his teammate. Bryce has made contact with his teammate Jordan Maturin and Maturin is out of the race and now Wolf is getting trying to get past um, Maturin uh, Bryce and so is Southgate and now Quag uh, Mocho sorry trying to get past. So what happened there? So Maturin seemed to be going right on the apex. He seemed to be going very very slowly. So what actually happened? So here we're on board with Maturin, he was in 12th place, oh that's why he had a problem, so that's why he was going really slowly. So he was just coming through the end of the endurance layout and he seemed to be running fine and oh it uh, looks like an elect. it looks like that's an electrical problem on his car so that's why he's involved in the crash because he was not going at his full speed and obviously probably his teammate doesn't know that. As you can see he comes around he's going at a lot slower pace, he's taking the corner much slower and obviously Bryce probably didn't know. Uh, that he was going slow. So what actually happened? So Bryce, as you can see, is catching up to him, coming into the corner. And Maturin, does he try and pull off? He, oh, he just, oh, he locks up. He just almost stops on the apex and stops right in front of his teammate, Bryce. And that forced the collision. So that was very, very unfortunate there. A bit of a silly move there from Maturin. I don't know why he did that. But I don't know if he was trying to let Bryce through there. I've, I'm not quite sure what he was doing. Is there Southgate who hits his wheel, but Fortune doesn't get any damage. And Wolf luckily doesn't get any damage either. And now Wolf goes past, and Wolf took a, a great advantage of that. And he went past both Southgate and um, and Bryce there. As there goes Michael Mocho, who goes past him as well. So, wow. that is, is I, I, I mean, this race has been, I think, 10 times better than Australia already. And we've only been 12 laps. And yes, as you can see there, it was an electrical problem that forced Maturin out, and obviously Bryce did not know that. So Southgate is now going to make a move on Wolf for 12th place on lap 12. And is he going to make the move stick? He's got the slipstream, he's on the inside, and oh, there's contact! Oh, and Wolf spun, and so is Southgate. And the drama continues. Southgate's terrible, 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 terrible race continues, and he is down to 14th place. And I, th I, could, see, I could see the move was on. But, I mean, it was quite a late one from Southgate, but as you can see coming in, unfortunately, I suppose, Wolf could have really backed off. I mean, Southgate tried to steer as much as possible, but there just wasn't really room for the two. And Wolf, again, lucky not to get any damage there, as he got lifted up uh, well off the ground there by Wolf as Mocho takes both places. And, well, Bryce temporarily does, but he'll have to go into the pits. As there's McKenzie in 16, as here is Adam Wolf with, uh, I believe that is Jim McKenzie right behind him. As here we're on board with Nicolas Gao in second place as Wolf is trying to defend from McKenzie in 14th place. McKenzie's going to try and make the move. Wolf goes a bit wide and McKenzie is going to take the place. Looks like Wolf's gone wide and McKenzie takes 14th place. He's on the road to recovery in this race after the lap one incident. And Roke is in the pits already. So Roke's made a, quite an early stop here. So he's obviously, well, it looks like he's probably, he is probably going to go for a two stop. But he's definitely, I believe, the first stopper of the day. Well, first legit stopper of the day, I should say. But he comes in. So Roke, who's not had a particularly great race so far, he'll hope for better after the stops. 
as he comes out, he is he does a seven point second stop. So obviously only a tire stop, nothing for fuel yet. So obviously fuel him, I guess, when they come to the next stop. As he comes out in 15th, he'll come out behind Adam Wolf and he'll come out ahead of Finley Strachan. And he just comes out ahead of him as he creeps slowly around turn one, and he does indeed come out. He comes out in 15th. As now Sam Thompson is coming, I think, out the pits, and now Florian Volker comes in for his first stop of the race. Volker, who's got a big lead over Gal after taking the lead from him, it was quite a dramatic start, but Volker has taken the lead at the moment, and he's kept it, and he's got a big gap, so he looks on course for victory right now. Unless anything goes wrong. As Volker comes out the pits, there's Noah who's coming in third. He'll stay in third. Volker will come out in second place. As Volker comes through. And Volker takes second place away. Or he keeps keep second place, I should say. Noah's in third. As Waze Cooper's in fourth. As here is Armar Carr battling Joseph Wills for seventh place. Coming into turn one, is Carr going to make the move stick for seventh? And he does make the move stick. As he moves up into 7th place ahead of Joseph Willis. So Joseph Willis has not had a great race so far. He's obviously, he's, has he not yet, he's not yet made a stop yet. Uh, obviously, it was still, it's still fairly early on to make a stop. But some people are deciding to pit early. It could be for a, a different strategy. But we will see come at the end of the race. Now here is Jay McKenzie who's going past Southgate, about the 10th person or so in this race to go past Southgate as he continues to struggle. Now Roman Quag is right behind as they come onto the pit straight. Quag is going to try and take advantage here of McKenzie coming onto the straight. It is side by side in front between McKenzie and Southgate. Is McKenzie going to make the move into turn one? It's side by side. McKenzie is going to take 11th. He's already got his nose in front coming into turn one as McKenzie breaks. And oh no, and McKenzie is break right in front of Roman Quag. And he has lost his uh, front wing, and or he's lost his uh, front wing, yes. And Roke's now going to get past. Uh, quite an unfortunate accident there for McKenzie. As you can see, he was side by side, and he, but he decided to back out of it. Unfortunately, he backed out of it at the wrong time, right in front of McKenzie. Uh, right in front of uh, Quag, sorry, and he goes into the wall. A bit of a, an unfortunate, a bit of a misjudgment there, I think, from McKenzie. You can't really put much of the blame for that, because he didn't really, I think, expect that uh, McKenzie would come right in the line of his sight and that is a very unfortunate incident there so Quag is going to have to go into the pit so his encouraging race so far is unfortunately going to have to end but we could still hopefully get a decent finish out this race but as you can see McKenzie in 10th place you can see uh, Southgate goes whilst he backs up he locks up goes on into the path of Quag who unfortunately has nowhere to go hits him and he goes into the wall right by the marshal's post right there Gotta get stuck on the wall actually there. But Roke will move up into 11th as he goes past. McKenzie's car being pushed away. Strack will move up as well. So Quag, who is having a great race, the instant, as you as you can see, was not really his fault. As now Michael Mutra comes out the pits for Lotus. He has done a 7.4 second stop. So they're all doing just tire stops, no fuel or anything like that so far. As now George Roke is trying to make a move on Southgate. Uh, as once again Southgate is getting overtaken. And, Roke, and Southgate is really trying to defend from Roke. And Roke's going to try and go on the inside. He can't do anything about it. There's almost contact there. They've essentially pushed each other through the corners. Robert Ionescu is in the pits for Toro Rosso. As now Roke is going side by side down the pit straight. And it'll be interesting to see if Roke actually gets uh, ahead of Ionescu or not. Side by side. Where is Ionescu? There is Ionescu. So Ionescu is going to get ahead of Roke just as it. It's going to be very, very close. It's going to be three wide into turn one. But Roke is going to do it. He's going to get ahead of Ionescu. In the stop, and Ines is trying to hang it around the outside with Southgate, but he doesn't quite make the move stick. And wow, that was some action there. So it was very tight. So Rope was on the inside of Southgate, and Ines was coming out the pits at the same time. Look at that. Rope just goes right around him. Very, very close there. And Southgate did very well also to avoid an accident there. Some great racing there between these three. As Rope does jump Ines in the pits for the time being, at least it seems. Ines had to back off there to let Southgate go through. As you can see, once again, very, very close there as they come through turn one. The PX is quite uh, quite interesting on this track. It means that it can be a very interesting race between certain cars, but it's very, very close. As now here is Mikolas Gal, who is right behind, I believe this is Wade Cooper for third. 
and he's going to make a move onto the straight. He's got the slipstream, he's got the power in that McLaren. The McLaren is noticeably already a lot better than the 2009 one. And Gal is going to make a move into turn one, and he makes the move past Cooper for second place, and he gets past. As now, as we'll know, as you can see, his teammate is in the pits. So let's see where he comes out on the track. Unella, who's had a who had a great who had a good season last season, it could have been worse. As Ferrari, unfortunately, probably didn't do as well as I think they would have hoped. Nella will be hoping for different this year. And now Felix Sontag for Mercedes is coming to the pits. As he's always had to wait there for, I believe that is Vigo Hulse to come in. So that could uh, affect Sontag near the end. We don't know yet. But he had to wait for Hulse to come out there. As Vigo Hulse comes into the pits for uh, Sauber. So Sauber seems to have, a, have an improved car. I mean, the, le the colour of the car doesn't see. I mean, the, the look of the car, but it looks alright, to be fair. It, it stands out, I suppose you could say, from the rest. As all oh, that is, Mick, uh, that's Joseph Willows going wide. As he comes onto the back straight, that's going to give Sontag a chance to catch up behind him. So that was a bit of an unnecessary narrow for Willows, who I don't believe has actually pitted yet. He still hasn't pitted on lap 21. So this is, I don't know what McLaren are thinking there with their strategy. I don't know really what they are doing, unless they're favouring Gal. I, 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 I don't really understand what they're uh, they're doing here. But um, anyway, so Willows rejoins the track in fifth, but Sontag will be on his tail soon, I imagine. As we now skip ahead, so Willows is still in, still not pitted yet, and he's now got Armar Car right behind him as they head onto the support pits. And Car's going to make a move. Is he into the corner? And oh, there's contact, and Car has gone round. There was contact there as Armar Car went round, trying to overtake Lewis Willows, who's been slowed down a lot. And Vigor Hulse is going to overtake him. I imagine on the back straight now, as Car's going to have to wait for the cars to go through. But he makes a bit of a hash of. Um, of rejoining there as we go on board so Willis defended from Carr and he went in front I mean I suppose Willis did kind of block his line a bit you could say there I mean I think that was probably you could say but I think Willis was to blame I think a bit more for that one I don't think um, Carr could have done anything different there the rope's gone past now Ian who has gone past but Hulse is going to get past Willis coming down the back straight as Hulse will have all the power and as Joseph Willis is on absolutely shot tyres completely shot tyres as Hulse makes his move into the final corner, he takes sixth place from Joseph Willows, who needs to pit soon if he doesn't want to exactly ruin his race. Ines goes up to eighth, Rope is up to ninth, Car down to tenth. There's now Strachan trying to overtake Wolf for thirteenth place, and is he going to make the move stick? It is side by side, well, it's not quite side by side, but he doesn't make the move stick as they come on, as they're about to come onto the back straight. As he's right behind, uh, it's actually Adam, it actually is Sam Thompson, it's not Adam Wolf. I do apologise, actually Wolf is the one behind uh, Strachan, but now Strachan is about to try and overtake Thompson coming into the final corner, so there's Wolf in the background, Strachan's going to try and make the move, it's going to be very, very close, and oh, there's contact as uh, Thompson's gone wide, uh, Strachan's taken 13th, and now Wolf's going to be right behind Thompson coming onto the straight, you could really, you could see that coming probably from quite a way, quite a way, um, quite a way away. I should say, uh, as Thompson gets uh, kind of knocked off a bit there by Strachan, so there's not really much you can do about that. As here is George Rope now, who's going to overtake Joseph Willis for eighth place. So Willows really needs to get into the pits soon if he's to stand any chance of at least getting some points from this race. I mean, I don't really know what McLaren are thinking. As Rope's on the inside as they're coming into the hairpin, as he makes the move stick into turn one, and Rope is now up to eighth place. So Joseph Willis now out the points. And he's already dropping rapidly off rope there. You can see, obviously, that his tyres are really, really short. I don't really know what um, McLaren are waiting for here or what they're doing, but anyway, there's Kuba just in front of Nella. So Nella's right behind Kuba as they're coming onto the support, as they're coming onto the support pits. And Nella, Nella's probably going to make a move at the end of the straight. It's uh, Nella versus Kuba. Nella's defending from Kuba. Nella's going to go on the inside. And oh, no, there's contact between the two Ferraris and Nella's round. Kuba's off. That was a stupid move there from Nella to do, and he makes a bit of a hash of trying to rejoin the track there, but that was really, really unnecessary unnecessary there for Nella. He could have just waited until the back straight where all the overtaking usually happens, and uh, Kuba manages to keep himself going. Nella spins round, so it'll be interesting to see what happens at the end. So Nella, who could still at least get himself a podium possibly, it'll be interesting to see what happens as he rejoins the track. He doesn't lose anything any positions fortunately but he has lost himself a lot of time as you can see as we now skip ahead to lap 27 where Nella is now right behind 
uh, Kuba once again. Will he actually make the move stick this time without any problems? We will see as he's right behind him. He's coming on the straight. He's going to have probably the fresher tyres. He's going to get past Kuba surely at the end of the straight. And he's going to make the move stick, is he? Yes, he is. He does make the move stick into the final corner. And that is the place for Will Neller. So that was pretty simple. Well, I say simple after the incident it needed to be. As Robert Ionescu has just come into the pits, or he just comes out of the pits, I should say. He will come in 10th place. Now, Mikolas Gal makes his stop. Uh, Volker still, I believe, out in front. He's yet to make his stop. So this will be interesting to see. Uh, as well, we don't actually know what the gap is at the front. So we don't know, like... We, we, we just don't we don't know much what's going on at the front. We don't know how far Volker is in front um, of Gal. So it will be interesting. Gal will come out and piss. It looks like there's a big gap um, from the first two drivers until until Nella in third. Probably because Nella obviously spun. That's probably why there's a bigger gap than it than it probably is. Uh, but oh, now Sam Thompson's off. Sam Thompson's miserable race ends on lap 32. On lap 30, in his case. And he comes around, it was a transmission problem that ends the race with Sam Thompson. It was just, it never, he probably is glad to get out of that car and get back to his hotel and probably get out of Bahrain as soon as possible. He'll probably want, he'll be on the first flight to Australia, I think, after this race. Um, as his teammate Wolf goes past him in the other Williams, not been a good start to the season for either of the Williams drivers. As you can see, transmission failure there. As Nella comes into the pits for his final stop of the Grand Prix, as we have only 12 laps to go of this race, or 13, you could say. So Nella comes in. Looks like that he will get a podium for Ferrari, unless Kuba takes it off him. Unless Kuba's had made his stop yet, but I'm not quite sure if he has. He might have done, but we will see. Uh, 6.4 second stop for, for from Ferrari there. That was quite a quick stop, you have to say. So Nella comes out in fourth place. I don't think they really had the pace to ever match Gal or Volker up front. As there is Nella in fourth, as there's Sontag right behind the fifth, so I think uh, Cooper could have it. But Vol Florian Volker, the leader, comes into the pits for his final stop of the race with 11 laps to go. So Will and oh yeah, and Gal has got out in front of Volker, so looks like the uh, McLaren have actually done the strategy right for Gal, but <laughs> the complete opposite for Willows, but there's obviously a reason for that. So Volker's now down to second place, so it looked like he was easily cruising to win, but now he's going to have to go and overtake Gal, who is already past the hairpin and, and into, about to go into turn four before the endurance layout. So now it's this, and now we're on board with Florian Volker, who's already caught up to Gal. He's got amazing pace in that Red Bull. As we now, as we are about to go over the line for seven laps to go, as in, as now coming down the straight comes Volker, he's going to have the slipstream, he's going to have the fresher tyres, he's going to be a lot quicker than Gal as he comes down the straight, look at the speed he's getting on the speed owner on the, on the left hand side of the screen, and Volker is going to make the move stick, and he does make it stick into turn one, Gal is down to second place and Volker retakes the lead and he looks set to win the Grand Prix unless he has any problems as Volker's already stretching his advantage. Uh, coming off into turn four, and there we go. As here is Florian, Florian Volker. We're on lap 49. He's got a 20 second gap out of Volker. He is absolutely flown away from Gal and Volker, who who will hope that last season, although it was good, could be better because he could have still won the championship, but he just didn't just didn't have the luck or the consistency as Southgate, and speaking of Southgate, he's off the track. So Southgate's miserable race continues as well. Well, his miserable race ends as well. So he was running down in 14 years behind the Lotus of Roman Quag. And so what happened to Southgate? So his his race has just been a nightmare from the start, probably his worst race in his history. He just goes wide, he locks up, goes wide, and he just can't avoid the wall, avoid the tyre wall. And Southgate retires on the final lap of the Grand Prix. Of course, he will still be classified. But, I mean, he will not care about that at all because he just, he was nowhere near the point. So, he'll just also want to get on the first flight to Australia for the next race. So, Southgate is out. Volker is just actually coming through that part of the circuit now. So, he'll go past the man who just beat him for second in the championship last season. So, Volker will hope to at least, will hope to at least avenge that, finish ahead of him and hopefully try and win the championship, because I think Red Bull certainly have a strong chance this year to win the championship. They did have a chance last year, but unfortunately, Braun in the first half of the season were just way too consistent. The car was just a lot better, and at the end of the season, despite Braun's car not being as good as it was, it was too late, because 
Uh, Braun had already essentially taken advantage. They'd taken over the championship very, very well. And so Red Bull will be hoping it'll be different this year. It looks like it'll probably be a battle between uh, Red Bull and McLaren, maybe Ferrari, if, uh, well, as long as they can avoid hitting each other, like uh, Cooper and Nella did earlier in the race. But um, anyway, Volker is coming down the support pitch. He's coming in through the left-hander. He's about to come onto the back straight. He would have hoped for more of this last season, but obviously... Uh, events such as Istanbul where he was leading and he's up in an engine failure with just a few laps to go it's probably what put him out the title race even though it was early on there and then that's what essentially killed him off the title we could have at least stayed in the title hunt but unfortunately that didn't happen but it won't matter as Florian Volker is about to come around the final corner Florian Volker he, wa he wanted to stamp his authority on the championship and he has done so and Florian Volker is coming down the pit straight. And Florian Volker wins the first race of the 2010 GP4 Offline Championship, the Bahrain Grand Prix. Well done to him. He deserved it. He showed his pace throughout this race. He's got a huge lead over Gal. 20 seconds in only, I think, in only six laps. That is quite incredible. Armar Carr is going to come home in seventh. Vigor Holston sixth. Uh, has just went across the line, if you didn't see. It's a great result for Holst. Great result for Carr as well. And Carr comes home in seventh place. As Mikolas Gau is going to come home in second place, he had absolutely no answer to Volker's pace at the end, but he will take second, he will take that. Joseph Willis will get a point, he will get a point in the end, despite uh, only despite his one-step strategy kind of not really working for him, but he'll still, as I said, get a point for this race, so at least that will be something he can take away for the Australian Grand Prix. Willis takes it in place, and Robert Ionescu will be in ninth. He'll probably have hoped that he could have got the points in this race, but not a bad start for Ionescu. He'll come home in ninth place. As he comes down the pit straight past the marshals on the right hand side of the screen and Ian Escu will take ninth place an encouraging debut from the Romanian driver now in 10th place will be George Rope for Force India he will have hoped for a better first race not particularly great but he will look forward to Australia where hopefully luck will change for him and in the background that is I believe uh, it is Waze Cooper it is so Waze Cooper is going to take third place a good start to the season for him Will Nello will take fourth and probably would have got third if not having if he had not had that collision with uh, his teammate as there is uh, tracking in eleventh. Kellen Rice is going to come home in twelfth. He's just going to beat his he's just going to beat Roman Quag in thirteenth and, and Anna Wolf behind in fourteenth. So Bryce will come home in twelfth. Not a bad debut, all things considered. As Bryce will come home in twelfth, Quag will be thirteenth. Wolf will be in fourteenth, and in fifteenth place will be. Actually, no, I, I believe that's it, actually. Uh, Sontag is in fifth, sorry. Um, actually, oh, no, no, I was wrong. Michael Mocho is still in this race, so I, I kind of forgot about him there. But Michael Mocho will come home in 15th place. He will be the last finisher of this race, and he comes across the line. Michael Mocho comes home and completes the running order. But there is your winner of the race, Florian Volker, thoroughly deserved. He has stamped his authority on the championship with this win. He will look forward to the rest of the season. He will look forward to the next race, the Australian Grand Prix, well, hope to win on the road this season, whereas he didn't last season where he got denied after hitting Sam Thompson. So he'll hope for different this year. But here are the full race results. So Volker wins with Gal second, Waze Cooper third, Will Nilla fourth, Sontag fifth, Hulse sixth, Carr seventh, Willows eighth, Ines good ninth, and Roke completing the top ten. With Strachan, Bryce, Quag, Wolf, and Macho completing the finishing order, they were all a lap down. Southgate still finishing but albeit classified despite crashing uh thompson mckenzie maturing willows moichin and evan burn all out of this race fastest laps florian volkus is the fastest lap by nearly half a second with gals by from gal cuba third nella fourth 1.7 seconds off with holst in fifth place car in sixth willow seventh wolf eighth sometime ninth strack and tenth Southgate 11th, Mackenzie 12th, Thompson, Ionescu, Roke, Quag, so uh, not very good pace there from Roke, shows why he was probably quite down the order, Quag, Maturin, Bryce, Moyton, Jays, whereas Michael Mocha and Burn obviously didn't uh, set a lap time because he retired early on, but here are the points after the first race, so Volker, obviously first, who winning the race in first, Gal second, Cooper third, Nella fourth, Sonto fifth, Hulse sixth, Car seventh, Willows eighth, Inescu ninth, then Roke, Strachan, Burn, Quag, Wolf, Macho, Southgate, Thompson, McKenzie, Majorian, Willows, Moitin, and Burn, all on zero points. But Ferrari lead the constructors for the time being, after or at least after this race, with 11 points, with Red Bull second, with 10, McLaren nine, Mercedes four, Sauber three, Toros a two, Orsindia, Virgin, Lotus, Williams, and Renault with zero points. 
Well, that has been the first race of the GP4 Offline Championship 2010 season. I hope you guys enjoyed. That was an incredible race. Don't forget to vote for your driver of the day and give the race a rating out of 10. So thank you very much for watching, guys, and we will see you for the next race, the Australian Grand Prix at the Melbourne Street Circuit. Goodbye, and see you then.